I'm Brian from RC Work Boat Haven. In this video, I'd like to show you how I construct these fiberglass hulls. This is the Haven 34, a 34 inch North American work boat. First, let's do a bit of history on this boat. Thanks for watching. Hulls like this were common all over North America. You could see them on the Great Lakes, in fishing trawlers, in tugboats, in schooners, in cutters. You could see them on the Chesapeake as a Chesapeake by boat. The same hull can be adapted as a fishing trawler. At the same height of this flange is the top of the gunnel, which is a big help knowing where you're at inside and outside the boat. This bulwark can be cut, trimmed, modified in any way, or completely removed. The Haven 34 design has a reverse bow and a reverse transom. There's also a tumble home on the sides in the bulwarks, and there is a gunnel. So that hull shape will not come out of a one-part mold. It has to be two parts. Here is the right and the left bolted onto the plug. These are the bases for the two sides so that they're held in the right position for layup. The plug was made from a basswood hull. It had to be slightly wider to account for the uh, dividing piece here that's uh, epoxied on. And these are the molds that we're going to be working with. And we have Two other molds we're going to use. We have a right and a left flange mold. So we'll be working with these molds here and we're going to construct a boat. The first step is going to be to add a few layers of mold release wax onto these molds. I'm using pure Carnauba wax. I'm also wearing a vinyl glove and I'm using 100% cotton, no lint cloths to apply the wax and to buff up the wax. The idea is to work the wax in in a circular movement and really do a nice careful job and get an even coat. Make sure you do the flange the edge of the flange. Don't miss anywhere. And I'll continue along until I've done the two halves and the two flange moles. I'm going to buff up the first half that I put wax on here. And right away you can see that a shine has developed on the surface. So here's the result of the first layer of wax. Not too bad. The reason there are contrasting colors like uh, black and orange on these moles is so that when I'm using something like white gel coat, it'll show through any th thin spots. So now we'll go ahead and do the second layer of wax. Try to get every single part of the surface. So it's been about 15 minutes and I'll start on my second buff. Second layer of wax all buffed up and I think I'll go with that. Now I'm like most hobbyists. I really do prefer working with wood, but for a hull Fiberglass makes sense. One thing I do not like about fiberglass, polyester resin, is the fumes. And I don't like the dust that created and so on. So to try to minimize the cleanup, I've come up with a method that works. We're going to use masking tape and we're going to create boundaries for the resin. So using the flange, all the way around the boat, I'm going to place masking tape so that it projects over 
this edge here about one quarter of an inch. Smaller pieces are used up forward here on that radius at the bow just to try to maintain roughly three sixteenths or one quarter of an inch of overhang. So using this tape and border method the result is a more accurate part with less cleanup. And here are the two flange moles with boundary tape. Now on top of your wax, it's always good to put a little bit of extra insurance into the layup. And that is why professionals would use something like polyvinyl alcohol or PVA sprayed on over the wax just to add that extra little release factor. On YouTube, I found someone using Trey Seme hairspray. This is a number four hairspray, which is uh, fairly strong, and it works perfectly. I've never had a problem. So just like PVA, the goal is to just lay on a fine mist. So I've waited about 10 minutes and it's definitely nice and uh, dry. Now, if you were to ask me, well, where does this go? Is it on the mold or is it on the hull? Well, from my experience, when I pull apart from these molds, there's none of this spray on the mold and there's none of it on the part. So I don't know where it goes. It is water soluble, I know that. But anyway, let's do coat number two. This ensures we've got pretty well most of it covered. Next step is the gel coat. Now to lay up the gel coat, I'll be wearing a proper mask. I'm going to be using ISO grade brushing gel coat. And I'm going to use the standard mech hardener and a disposable brush. I'll be mixing up 200 milliliters of this gel coat and adding 2 milliliters of hardener. I've set the two sides up so that the styrene will roll down in here and this section down here in the chine or the bottom of the dish can actually set up. So here are the four molds the next day. The gel coat was laid on fairly thick. I didn't miss any spots so I have no touch-ups to do. Next step, let's deal with some mat. I'm going to be using two layers of one ounce mat. Often with mat, there's a tendency to rip it apart and then set that inside a mold. I don't have any problem with that, except that I don't like the mess. There'd be fiberglass strands everywhere. I like everything neat and tidy. You can see here that there was no dripping down the side of the hull. There was no mess. I had a plastic drop cloth in my layup room and I think I had maybe two small drops of gel coat on that after I'd done all four parts. So to me, neatness and tidiness is everything if you want to live with your hobby, especially with polyester resin. <laughs> so you've seen in the past that people would lay mat on a separate uh, flat surface and then saturate it with resin and then pick it up and lay it in. 
Well, I'm really doing the same thing. Only what I'm going to do is put one layer of mat in position right inside the mold and then saturate it. So now let's take a look at this boat a bit more close up. This gunnel has like a semicircular recess here. And if I just lay a piece of mat on like that and saturate it, there's going to be a really good chance that there will be uh, an airspace or a void. The first step is going to be to fill in this little cavity here and then we can go ahead and lay out our one ounce mat. Thin pieces of one ounce mat are cut and laid into that recess like that. Cut 20 or 30 strips. So now take those thin strips and just lay them in to that cavity. The gel coat remains slightly tacky for a couple of days. So it does tend to stick in place. It looks like two layers in this uh, groove will do the job. Just feel with your fingers if anything seems a little bit lower. So our supplies are a bunch of uh, six by six pieces cut. They're not totally square and looks like about two by six. I've got a stack of each. Take one from the top, flip it over and just move it into position like this. And that's pretty good, but she has to have a little bit off here. Now it becomes easier. Place the second piece. And the third. You might have to make a cut. And in here I've just pushed down and formed that bend at the chine. Any small gaps, just pick up a piece from your scrap bucket here. And here's a layer of one ounce mat pre-laid in the mold. So I'll prepare a second layer to go on top of this and I'll have that ready to put on once the first layer is saturated. So now I have the four molds ready for layup. I have the second layer stacked up in order on a paper towel for each mold. So that'll be easy to lay down. I think we're ready to go. I'll be mixing up 200 milliliters of ISO polyester resin and I'm going to add 1.8 milliliters of hardener.
So that brings us to the end of part one. We've got two ounces of mat all set up on these four molds. In part two, we're going to finish the two halves and the flanges. We're going to put the whole model together. So don't miss that one. Feel free to like, comment, and of course, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.